Hey, how you doing? This is Adam Post, publisher of more than a thousand comic books, and today we're talking about the secret formula that Kevin Feige has revealed. This was in an interview that he did in this Spotify podcast. I'm going to give you a link to it. It's free. You can listen to it for yourself. It's 17 minutes and 15 seconds or so. And it is revealing, it does talk about Kevin Feige's origins and his kind of thoughts about what Marvel was and what it should be. But, and you may not be surprised by this, but I was a little bit surprised by this. Kevin Feige actually lays out very specifically that there is no secret to Marvel's formula. And when they're considering story that they can adapt into films or TV shows, it only needs to have two criteria. One criteria is they've got to put a Marvel logo on it. Literally, he actually says, yeah, We've got to put the Marvel logo on it. Two, it's got to be something where the seed of the idea is from the comic book. That's his standard. That's it. So if you're wondering about why is it that Marvel seems like it doesn't really have standards in terms of the stories it's doing, why is it that if you watched Black Panther and you saw the first film and you said, oh wow, kind of a, a male film here, this is a kind of a father and son type of moment, Black Panther, the franchise means nothing. They destroyed it. They turned it into a mother-daughter story. You can't take... This is the whole idea of a franchise. If you were to go to McDonald's, if you were to go and purchase a Rolex, you don't expect that a Rolex is all of a sudden going to be like some type of shoe. It, it's different from the establishment of the brand. And there is no sense in this interview of what the Marvel brand stands for. It stands for two things. One, it's got to have the logo on it. Now that doesn't count. That's not even a thing. You can't just put a logo on something and say that represents the brand. It doesn't. That's just the logo. It's a visual representation. The other aspect that, okay, well, it's got to have something that appeared in the comics. It's got to have some seed from the comics of the idea. Well, now you know why in the last, whatever it's been, 10 years or so, that comics have had all sorts of strange things introduced into them that later can appear in films and uh, TV shows. These are the ideas that they want to eventually put into films, I suppose. The brand is supposed to stand for something. They also are supposed to be focused on continuity. That's what makes it a universe. It's not a universe just because there are a lot of participants in it. Like, well, there are a lot of stars in the universe. So as a result, therefore it's a universe. Like, no, it's not that there are many, many participants. There's supposed to be some sort of thematic representation about heroes and things like that. They don't have to all be superheroes. But for the love of God, you've got to have some other standards than just that. And I'm going to play for you the clip that was really so just crazy to listen to, where Feige explains these two elements. In fact, Let's play the clip right now. A, a book can be anything. A novel can have any type of story whatsoever. So it all depends on what story you translate. Non-comic readers don't understand that it's the same thing in comics. There are 80 years of the most interesting, emotional, groundbreaking stories have been told in the Marvel comic. Uh, and it is our great privilege to be able to, to take what we want and adapt. But another way to do that is adapting them into different genres. And what types of movies do we want to make? And I from sitting at, at, at USC, probably a semester or two before, uh, before your screenwriting class, Jason, and sitting in Cinema 101 and being exposed to so many different types of film that I said, I want to make all of these. I don't want to just make one kind of movie. I want to make all kinds of movies. And I found that if we tell the story right and if we can and if we adapt them in a way that the audience still knock on wood so far as following us along 22 plus years later with we can tell any types of movies that are are merely uh, share one thing the Marvel Studios logo above the title and a seed of an idea from our publishing uh, uh, history. So there you have it from Kevin Feige himself, super producer of Marvel Studios. He knows how to make something successful. Just put the Marvel logo on it and make sure it's got some seed of an idea, as he says, from Marvel's comics. Well, there's a little more information on this from the direct cover the podcast pretty well. Kevin Feige reveals the secret to Marvel's formula. So let's discuss it. Before we do, please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up. You guys are the best. I really do appreciate you. Thank you so much for subscribing. In a new podcast episode, President of Marvel Studios Kevin Feige opened up about Marvel Studios secrets. The MCU is one of the most successful franchises in movie history. Not only does it have a massive and vocal fan base, but also its projects and stars have received prestigious honors and awards. Love it or hate it, everyone can acknowledge that the MCU must be doing something right. 
Kevin Feige shared his perspective on this in a new interview. What makes the MCU work? In an interview on the Movie Business Podcast, President of Marvel Studios Kevin Feige spoke to host Jason Squire about the secrets to the MCU's success. He said that while storylines and spoilers are kept secretive, there are no secrets and there isn't any secret formula that Marvel follows to ensure success in its project. Quote, what are the secrets to Marvel Studios? Kevin Feige says, the honest truth, which is not as exciting, but you get the inside scoop on this podcast and I'll give it to you. There are no secrets. There are secrets in terms of the storylines and spoilers and things like that. But if there was a formula, because people have been asking up for a very long time, what's the formula? The truth is there isn't any. You know, the formula obviously is you take a beloved continuity focused franchise that actually stood for something. The Marvel Comics universe developed and created with Stan Lee and a lot of other talented creators, a lot of passion, many decades of focused stories that really meant something to people. Take that, translate it to films, a nice tight translation like Marvel Phase 1 actually was, and then build a group of really interested fans and then turn that into something meaningful for people in film. If it worked in comics, there's no reason it shouldn't work in film. And it did work in film. But what did Feige do with that? Now he does whatever he wants with it. There's no honoring the history. There's no honoring what Marvel Comics is all about. There's no honoring superheroes. It's whatever stories we come up with, we'll just throw the Marvel logo on it and that's what they stand for. If you disagree or you agree, let me know in the comments below. Feige explained that one of the many, many positive parts of Marvel being part of the Walt Disney Company was the ability that he was able to speak to other creatives at Pixar and then later at Lucasfilm about them making films. And Feige explained specifically, and I'm going to give you this link to the podcast so you can see for yourself. You can listen to it. It's only 17 minutes. He explains that all the Marvel projects seem to start off terrible and then later get shaped and reworked and turn out to be good. And supposedly the Pixar people would say, oh, sure, that's how our projects start out as well, which made Feige feel better about himself. But the truth of it is, if you look at any of the early work in progress at Pixar, they were so focused on quality, so focused on uniqueness and story, and they didn't even rely on sequels. There were no sequels planned in the original take on what Pixar was supposed to be. It was supposed to be just original great story. And Pixar delivered on that. That was the Steve Jobs days. Those were the earlier days before they got stuck with Disney. And that's the opposite of what Marvel's all about. When the Pixar people said, listen, everything starts off terrible. And Feige was like, oh, cool. That's like my content. Everything starts off terrible. They didn't really mean terrible the way that Feige means terrible. They meant that it needed work to become a brilliant long-term masterpiece, as opposed to what Feige is doing now, which is anything with a Marvel logo on it that features, you know, quote, representation, end quotes. Feige said he had a weight lifted when it was revealed to him that the work needed to make Marvel projects good enough that ends up standing the test of time is work that all creatives end up putting into every project that projects don't come out of people's brains perfectly formed. Well, this is a strange, naive thing that Feige is saying. It makes you wonder, does Feige have like any talent over there? I know a lot of people have said, hey, listen, you're not giving enough credit to Alan Horn. You're not giving enough credit to some of the other people that contributed to Feige's early success. And I would tend to agree with them because when he makes statements like this, that he doesn't understand that projects come out weak when they're at the conceptual stage and they need more and more development as time goes on. I mean, it's a nice, honest admission, but it makes you wonder like, how did Feige even wind up in this position in the first place? The phase one content was good and solid. I liked it as time has gone on. It's pretty clear that there are really no good standards at Marvel for what is actually good what's consistent with the Marvel brand. You can't just put a logo on something and say, well, see, it's got a logo on it. It must be consistent with the Marvel brand. Or that it's got a seed of an idea that appeared in something in the comics. That means that it's consistent with the Marvel brand and it's appropriate for Marvel? No, I mean, so there's really no one running quality control. One of the things apparently missing from this interview is any discussion of now what's been publicly talked about how Disney is supposed to have this oversight quality board watching over Feige to make sure that the quality improves from phase four. I mean, this isn't something that's even a rumor. This is something that's openly talked about that the quality of phase four wasn't where it was supposed to be. This isn't by the highest standards. This is by like minimal standards. You didn't meet minimal standards. So I'd like to have seen some questions about 
What is going on with quality control? Who's responsible for quality control at Marvel? Isn't it you, Kevin Feige? Or is it in the individual producer on a project? Or is it the director? Who Who is it? And how could it come that something would get done and be like, oh, well, it was rushed. It really isn't that good. And also, why are the visual effects people like up in arms that you guys don't pay them well? Because you would think of all people with the extraordinary budgets that Marvel has, they could at least pay the visual effects people market rate. I don't know. Let me know what you think of all this in the comments below. Always love to see your feedback. Do you think that Kevin Feige knows what he's doing? How, is he Forrest Gump? How did he get into this position? Always love to see what you guys have to say. Please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up and I'll see you again soon with another video. And if I don't see you, I will miss you.